Hey, welcome to edX world and another video in the ASA level accounting series. In the previous video, we've already seen the entries that are to be passed at the time of admission of a new partner into an existing partnership. In this video, we're going to see what happens when an existing partner retires from the partnership, what accounting entries have to be passed, how the balance of the existing partner in the partnership has to be settled. And we'll, we'll see, we'll see all, through, all of this through a solved example also. If you've not already watched the video on admission of a partner, I would suggest please watch that video first and then come back to this one because in this video, I'm not going to explain all the concepts entirely in detail. I will just be comparing the difference in entries between admission and retirement so that you get a perspective of all the entries that will be passed at the time of retirement. So to understand this video completely, you will have to know what are the entries to be passed at the time of admission of a partner and all those entries I've already discussed in detail in a previous video. The link of that video I'll, I'll be giving you in the description. Please watch that video first. So in this video, we understand what is retirement of a partner and we will see the same adjustments that we've already seen for admission of a partner, the revaluation of assets and liabilities, the goodwill adjustment, the repayment of capital back to the retiring partner. In case of admission, the new partner was bringing in capital to the firm. But in case of retirement, the firm will have to repay back the capital amount to the retiring partner and all of this will be followed by a solved example on retirement. So what is retirement of a partner? See, in an existing firm, when one of when the when a partner decides to leave the firm, it is known as retirement of a partner that he may leave the firm due to many reasons. Maybe he's reached his retirement age. The partner finds better business opportunities outside his existing firm. There might be some disagreements among the partners because of which the partner is now interested in moving out of the firm. And so what all entries have to be considered at the time of retirement of a partner? First of all, there will be a change in profit sharing ratio because in the old firm, when the partner has not retired, there would be a certain profit sharing ratio between all the partners. In the new firm, when, the, when one of the partners have retired, there will be a new profit sharing ratio. Then there will be revaluation of assets and liabilities, goodwill adjustment and repayment of capital. So let's see the difference between the entries at the time of admission and retirement. The revaluation of assets and liabilities have already been discussed in detail in the admission video. What entries have to be passed when the value of assets have to be increased or decreased and same for liabilities. Let's assume that we've got a profit on revaluation. Now this profit on revaluation was distributed using this journal entry in the, in the admission question where the revaluation profit was shared only by the old partners, not by the new partner. But in case of retirement, Question, the revaluation profit will be shared by all the partners of the firm because all these partners are existing partners. So whatever profit is made on revaluation that belongs to all the partners in the firm. Obviously, if it's a loss, the entries would be opposite. In case of retirement of a partner, the entries would be to debit all the partners capital and credit revaluation account. Goodwill adjustment, we've already seen in detail at the time of admission. So the first entry that was done in the admission question for goodwill was to create goodwill by debiting goodwill and crediting the old partners. So the first entry I have here is to create goodwill. And then we wrote off goodwill by crediting goodwill and debiting all the partners in the new profit sharing ratio. So the second entry is for write off of goodwill. Similar set of entries will be done at the time of retirement. First, create goodwill and credit all the partners. So the first entry is to create the goodwill. And the second entry is to write off the goodwill. But when writing of the goodwill, we will debit only the continuing partners, not the retiring partner. The new partner was bringing in capital in the admission question. So the assets were debited and the new partner's capital was credited. Here in retirement, the firm will have to repay back the capital amount to the partner that could be in form of cash, bank or any other asset. At times, it is also possible that the firm may not be able to re repay the entire amount at the, at, at the moment. So they will transfer the amount to be repaid to the partner's loan account and that loan account will be settled in future. So the journal entry that is used to that is this. The retiring partner's capital account will be debited so that it can be closed. Whatever assets are given to the partner, those would be credited. 
and if any balance is to be transferred to the loan account new partner's loan account would be credited let's look at a solved example so that all these entries are completely clear so we have this example here wherein x y and z are the existing partners of a firm the old profit sharing ratio is given here as 4 is to 3 is to 4 their balance sheet is given just before the retirement of x then x is retired goodwill value is given so we'll have to make entries for goodwill the revalued values of the assets are given so we'll have to prepare the revaluation account x was paid 15000 immediately from the bank account the balance was transferred to his loan account and y and z continued the firm and their new profit sharing ratio was equally so 1 is to 1 let's use all these details to first prepare the revaluation account then the capital account of the partners and then the balance sheet of the new firm where x is not a partner anymore Let's begin with our revaluation account. If you read adjustment number two, the value of new value of freehold premises given at 120,000. Compare this with the book value of freehold premises, which is given in the balance sheet at 109,000. The freehold premises have the value of the freehold premises have increased by 11,000. That would be a gain on revaluation. In the video on admission, I told you that any gain on revaluation will appear on the credit side of revaluation. So we would record this entry on the credit side. Fixtures and fittings, the new value is 62,400. Compare this with the book value, 64,900. Fixtures and fittings have lost a value of 2,500. Loss on revaluation. This entry would be recorded on the debit side of revaluation account. And finally, we have the trade receivables at 13,700. Compare this with the book value of 20, sorry, 14,500. You will realize that trade receivables have lost a value of $800, which is also loss on revaluation. So, on the debit side, we will record trade receivables 800. Let's record these three entries on revaluation of assets. There are no other entries in the revaluation account. And then we will calculate the profit or loss on revaluation and distribute that between the partners. Once the entries in the revaluation are done, we can see that the credit side or the gain side is greater than the debit side or the loss side. So it means that there's a net gain on revaluation. The net gain on revaluation would be 11,000 minus the total of debit side 3,300. So that makes it a total gain of 7,700 on revaluation. Let's distribute this gain on revaluation to the partners X, Y and Z in their old profit sharing ratio, which is 4 is to 3 is to 4. So we've distributed the profit on revaluation of 7,700 to the partners X, Y, and Z, 2,800, 2,100, and 2,800. This will be later recorded in the capital account of the partners. Let's continue preparing our capital account. The capital account will begin with balance brought down. So the balances are given in the balance sheet as 67,600, 58,500, and 62,200. Then I would record my profit on revaluation on the credit side as per the revaluation account. The next entry is required for goodwill adjustment. So we will create our goodwill at 44,000. When we create a goodwill, we will credit all the partners capital accounts in the ratio 4 is to 3 is to 4. So we will arrive at a value of 4 by 11 into 44,000, 16,000 for X, 3 by 11 of 44,000, 12,000 for Y and 16,000 again for Z on the credit side. Then we need to write off the goodwill. When writing off the goodwill, we will have to debit the continuing partner's capital account, which is Y and Z, and that too in the new profit sharing ratio, which is one is to one. So on the debit side of Y and Z, we will have goodwill as half of 44,000, 22,000 each for Y and Z. Once the entries in the capital account are done, next we need to 
pay 15,000 to X on retirement from the business bank account so that entry will come on the debit side as bank in the X column 15,000. Anything left in X's account, any balance left in X's account will be transferred to X's loan that will be repaid in future. So the I will balance X's account, I will see the difference between credit and debit and put that amount as difference in the X's loan. And finally, I will also balance the capital accounts of Y and Z, find out the final closing balances that will be used in preparation of the balance sheet. So we've arrived at a closing balance of 50,659,000 for Y and Z in their capital account and X's loan balance remaining in the firm is 71,400. Let's use all of this to prepare our new balance sheet after X's retirement. So when preparing the balance sheet, we'll begin with our non-current assets. Non-current assets, we will use the revalued amounts, the new values to prepare the balance sheet of the new firm. So for freehold premises, we will record them at 120,000 and fixtures and fittings, we will record them at 62,400 and take the total of non-current. Next, we will record our current assets. Under current assets, we have trade receivables, but at the new value of 13,700, do not record them at the old book value. Bank is also there in the existing balance sheet of 5,600, but we've paid 15,000 to X. So definitely there is an overdraft now in the bank account, which will be recorded in the credit side of the balance sheet. So in current assets, we just have one current asset, which is trade receivables. Let's record that, find out the total value of the assets of the new firm. So the total value of assets is 196,100. Let's continue preparing our balance sheet. The other side, which is the capital and liability side, under that first we will record our capital. The capital of Y and Z will be taken from the capital account that we've just prepared, the new closing balances. Let's do that first. Next, we will record our liabilities. Under that, we have X's loan, which will be repaid by 31st March 2022. Since it will be repaid within one year, so we will record that also as a current liability. If the, the information was not given that it would be repaid within 31st March 22, we could have recorded that under non-current liabilities as X's loan. But now for this question, we will record X's loan as a current liability. So we have excess loan under current liabilities. We have trade payables from the existing balance sheet at 5,700. And also I told you bank overdraft will be recorded here. 15,000 was paid to X, but there was insufficient balance in the bank account. So the difference of 15,000 and 5,600 will be recorded as bank overdraft, which is 9,400. Let's record all these liabilities and take the total of the capital and liabilities. So the total of our capital and liabilities is 196,100 which matches with our total of assets. It means we've covered 
all the entries in our balance sheet. I hope this video was useful. You've understood how to make entries for retirement of a partner. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video. Please share the video with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'll see you soon with a new video.